And today, I am Laura Tinsie from South Africa. I am the BIM facilitator for South Africa. Um, welcome to today's event. Um, today, we're going to be hosting a webinar. Um, it's going to be just about 60 minutes. Um, we're going to be discussing um, how to generate bill of quantities from pet drawings with open BIM quantities. And with me, I've got um, my colleague from Spain, Afonso Select. Afonso, hello. Thank you for joining me. Hi, Loreto. How's it going? Thank you to well having me here. You. It's it's a pleasure mm -hmm. to be here today, sharing a little bit about this this software that is so important that is open in quantities. Um, I'm sure that it's going to be a very nice uh, um, uh, subject. Um, it's it's a good opportunity to to see this new feature that we have in the software. Yes, and it, it, it's very important um, because now uh, people are looking for ways that they can do things faster, right? And and generating a bit of quantities is something that really takes a lot of admin time. Um, so um, our software Open BIM Quantities assists our clients um, with with generating quicker uh, bill of quantities and cost um, cost estimates. Um, so, so Alfonso, I believe you're going to be showing us how to um, generate the bill of quantities from uh, CAD drawings. It can be DWG, DXF, um, PDF, PNG. What else did I miss? Exactly. Actually, here in, in my screen, in the description of the event, uh, we can see this this formats that we'll be covering today. Yeah. So when we say CAD files, actually they are not just CAD files. We are talking also about some kind of images like PNGs, JPGs, and also PDF yeah. files. Okay. So we can import these types of um, files uh, at OpenBIM quantities, and then use this inf these files as reference to um, quantify everything that is related to our BOQ. Okay, so this, this formats, they will be covered, covered in the presentation. Okay, okay, okay. Um, awesome. And I see there on the description that it also mentioned that from that, um, uh, open room quantities were even able to, to have different options such as measuring distances, area, volumes, um, and any other measurements um, that um, our clients may, may need to do on the go. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So awesome. Thank you. Let's so, not waste time and let's get into it. Mm -hmm. All right. So we have uh, around one hour to show everything here. We are also recording this presentation. So in some uh, hours, you, all, you can also then uh, watch this presentation in our YouTube channel. If you have any doubt, you want to see something that, that you miss it. Uh, and you you also can send messages. We, we have a kind of, a kind of chat here in this this tool that is called GoToWebinar. So you can send us any message. Um, we will be trying to answer this 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 uh, questions or these comments through the chat. And if you see that there are too much and we have don't have enough time, then we can send you a mail uh, with the the answers. Okay. So please interact with us. Send your message, your doubts. That's going to be a pleasure to to answer it. Okay. And also, I believe it's going to be also saved on the um, site website under learning resources. Exactly. If you navigate here, opening the training menu, you can then find the video gallery or the learning resources. Okay. In this case, as we are talking about uh, open bin quantities, if you come here to the learning resources, you can search for open bin quantities. That's going to be somewhere here, open bin quantities. And then you can look for the videos related to open bin quantities. So you can also then find this information here. And not just this webinar, all the other videos that we have, tutorials, uh, other webinars, and also other documents uh, related to open bin quantities, you can find it here. Okay. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right. Um, and I am available anytime on email at lorado.com at site.com. Um, alternatively, um, you can email site at site.com. So it's cype at cype.com. And we'll be Perfect. glad to Perfect. attend to your query anytime. 
it would be very uh, useful or right, if you share this uh, these addresses in the chat then the people they can click on that and copy it's going if you please could sh uh, share it it's going to be very useful okay oh, i'm doing that matter awesome awesome thank you so much thank you and um, this was very interesting um i we, we're learning a lot um and um of course time is of essence um and if we are able to get um solutions that are able to assist us to fast track um fast track the, the, the processes and um keep track also of 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 um the quantities in 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 in, in the structure that that helps a lot and not only does it help you as um as the consultant, as the constructor, but also helps the client as well. Mm -hmm. All right. So from this point, I think we could uh, turn off our cameras. Then we have then we have more space to share the screen. And okay. Lorato, if you please could uh, turn off yours, I will turn off turn off mine too. And then we can jump to the software and start uh, creating a new a new example, starting with our presentation. Okay. All right, so this is the, the, the main interface of OpenBeam Quantis. This is where our work starts, okay? Every time that we create a new project or we create a new view of quantities, that is the case uh, of today, we will start in a screen like this. This is like a common screen that we have in all the softwares developed by SIPE. We always have these three main uh, blocks, three main windows here. Um, some tools to uh, manage the file, create new files, open uh, projects that were created before. Here you can also find some examples. Here you can see the most recent files that were uh, created in this computer that I'm working today. Um, you can also open a little bit more, extend this list, just clicking here. And here you can also find more information, more documents, you can find the user user's manual of OpenBeam quantities. So here you can get uh, more information, okay? Uh, today we'll create a new a new example, okay? A new BOQ, for example. Here you can browse and select a different uh, folder to save your to save your, your project. You can also add a description to then have more information. Uh, maybe you can have different versions of the same project or you can have a similar project that was duplicated from another. So you can use this descri description uh, space to add that kind of information. Let's accept. And then we have this window here. This window, uh, it's uh, very useful when we are working in a team. For example, if we work with more people, we can connect the, the software to Bing Server Center. Bing Server Center, it's a cloud server. It's, it's a kind of... Um, place in the cloud where we can share information with other colleagues with uh, our team so uh, we, we could be working for example in a in a bean uh, ecosystem or in a bean workflow where we can receive files from other other colleagues and then use these files to to generate the view of quantities okay in this case of today, we will not be working online, so we'll be working locally, totally work locally. Actually, in this in this uh, presentation, we'll see one workflow that can be done just with OpenBeam Quantis, just this software, and just for one computer, okay? Um, in our website, you can find more videos, more tutorials, other webinars that, that were recorded, where you can see other workflows, where you can combine OpenBeam quantities with other tools, and also um, see some examples of projects that were developed or view of quantities that were developed uh, in a Beam workflow. Okay, so let's accept and let's wait uh, to see the main interface of OpenBeam quantities. In this case, it's an empty project, as I said before. Everything here, it's uh, it's empty. You can see there are different windows, different spaces here. Um, some of them are related to quantities, properties, entities, 3D view, and you can also see that here we have two tabs. Okay, we have the tab that is called View of Quantities, and the tab that is called Quantities of the Bing Model. Okay, depending on the workflow, you are uh, you are you are doing. Uh, you will use some tools that are here in the quantities of the Beam model tab, and 
always you use the, the 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 tools that are in the bill of quantities tab. Okay, so the quantities of beam model uh, tab is uh, something that is um, it, it depends on the workflow that you use. Sometimes you not use the tools that are here, but you always use the tools that are here on the bill of quantities tab. Okay, in the workflow that we'll be doing today, as we don't have a beam model in this case, as I said before, if you want to learn how to use the quantities of beam model tab, please for, uh, look for more content in our website. Uh, but as today we will not be working with Bing, we'll jump directly to the bill of quantities tab and start working from here. Okay. I'm using the the version 2024A. Uh, so if uh, you are looking watching this video on YouTube or you have the recording of this video, um, maybe you can have a um, more uh, recent version that was published so uh, look for for that in also in in our website okay so let's let's begin here um here in this interface uh just let me show you a little bit what we have here we will have a, a place like this that it's the place that we will create our view of quantities Every window here can be, uh, we, we can we can change the size of these windows, okay? Uh, you can also close these windows, you can uh, drag these windows and, and separate it for, from the, the main, the main, the, 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 or the, the first place where, where it's located, okay? You can also use um, more than one screen, so you can use two screens to 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 work if you if you have a, another monitor in, in your office for example to, to be easier uh, and using this button here you can reset the, the the screens to the default position just clicking here you can use this option here that is reset window layout and then you can come back to the default position okay uh, the idea here today it's going to be uh, create this view of quantities I will show you how to create the structure of this, the, the, the chapters of this view of quantities. We will see how to create uh, a project database, we create the items of our project database, and then we'll see how to extract the quantities uh, of uh, some different types of files, in this case, DWGs, DXF, PDFs, uh, and use the quantities of these files to, um, to finish the view of quantities, okay? So let me come back here to the page that we saw before, because here in the highlights of the events, we have a kind of guide to see the steps that we'll be following. Maybe this is the could be the, the normal steps that we have in a in a in a workflow like this. So the first thing that I would like to show you is how to import or create coast databases using OpenBeam quantities. Okay, so this is going to be the first step, because then we'll keep keep going and we will use the information from these costs to then create our view of quantities okay so the, the first step is to have some costs available in the, in the software and i would like to show you two ways to 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 do that okay coming back here to open main quantities to create our project database we we'll use this button here the project database button and clicking here we have a new window with a lot of things here with a uh, um, uh, some some specific tools to create project databases, um, and it, this project database could be created for one project, then can be saved, and then you can use the same uh, the same project database for other projects in the future. So normally we'll have a project database that is more complete than the the view of quantity itself. Okay, because probably the project database will have much more items than the, the view of quantities because we keep creating, developing, um, extending the project database uh, according to the project that we do. Okay, but let's let's create our first project database here. So the first thing I'll do, it's going to be set some general parameters, for example, uh, the currents uh, of the this database. Let's imagine we are working for for South Africa, for example, but could be for any country. Actually, we here you can add this the the, the symbol, the, the currents that you want, the the the, the symbol of the, the the currents. But if you click here in this blue arrow, you can also find for you can look for for a specific currents. In this case, let's use the South African rent, and then we can uh, define if the position of this 
this symbol is going to be on the right or in the, or in the left of the numbers. For example, I will maintain on the right. You can also set the decimals of each um, each uh, concept of your project, your view of quantities, the amount of decimals here in the prices, the quantities. So you can set it here. Okay, let's accept it. Um, here you can also apply some price adjustments. For example, you can add some coefficients if you want to labor performance coefficients, machinery performance coefficients. You can also add some price coefficients. We'll see some examples in a, in a while, okay? But maybe the most important tools that we have here in this interface are located in this block here, in the addition or in the edit block. Okay, we'll be working a lot with these buttons here to create our project database, okay? The first thing that we, we must have here in our database is it's create uh, some chapters or some folders to organize the items that we'll have in our, course data, in our project database. So to create this structure or these folders, I will use this button here. So I'll click here in the items and inside of the items, I will add a work section. Okay, and for example, I'll add a code to this um, to this work section. Could be in this case, I will be working with chapters. So the codes in in my example, there will be numbers um, related to the number the number of the chapters. So the the chapter zero, okay, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be for example preliminary works. Okay, so here I will add in the future all the the items related to the preliminary works that we must have in our field before we start constructing. Then I will add the second section that's going to be the chapter one that I, I'll call, for example, substructure. Okay, that here we have the foundations. Maybe we can have some other, uh, uh, some some basements, uh, things like that. Then I will add um, a new a new a new folder that is going to be this chapter two. That's going to be the structure. Okay, or superstructure, let's call that. Then we can, can have much more than the structure, super structure. Okay, uh, let's add one more. As you can see, it's very easy to add a, a chapter or a folder. Um, you just have to click on, on the place you wanna add and then define a code and uh, define a, a, a concept or a name, a title. To this, um, to this folder or chapter, okay? So very easy. If I, I, I'm always clicking here in the main title that is called items or prices, but if I click inside of one of these folders, for example, here, and use the same button, actually I'll create a subfolder. For example, here I could create the 2.1 that could be, for example, columns, okay? And then I'll have the columns here. If I click again, I could add, for example, the beams, okay? Oh, sorry, in this case, I forgot to put the, the, the number. No problem. Here, I can add, I can change it. I can change, actually copy the, the text and post, put here on the summary and change the, the code to the right one here, okay? So no problem, if you wanna change it, everything can be changed here in this area that is the, the, the properties of the, the, the item or folder that are selected here in the list, okay? I can also duplicate things, copy things, delete things. For example, if I would like to copy the, the beans, I will have the beans here. Um, while I have the, the same name and the same code, the software tells us that the, the code is repeated. So it's, in, it's red, so it's easy to understand that there is something here that, that is exactly the same. So let's change the code and let's add, for example, another concept like this labs. So easily you can create a new folder based in the first one that was created before, okay? Let's keep creating here some, some folders. Let's uh, copy, for example, the three and let's create the four. The four is gonna be, for example, insulation. Uh, and let me see waterproofing, for example, proof. Proofing, sorry, proofing. Ah, sorry, today it's complicated here to, to write proofing, okay. Um, let's create another one. Let's add, for example, the chapter number five, that's gonna be the roofs, for example. 
the roofs and for example one one more just to have some some of them here six that could be internal finishes for example internal finishes of course the structure of these chapters you can create in according to the the way that you construct could be sometimes in some countries some regions there are some rules to create these structures okay so here you can create you can create a lot of levels here just created two levels so uh, using chapters and sub chapters or folders and subfolders but you can create more levels just adding more and more work sections inside of the folders that you created okay there is no limits to to do that all right so with this first structure, we, are, we already have the place to um, locate, to place the items of our Coast database, okay? So I think the first thing that we can do here now is create one a new item, okay? A new item that in the future will be related to a coast, okay? For example, let's create here uh, a column, for example, a reinforced concrete uh, column Okay, I squared a reinforced concrete column. The columns will be located here in this folder that we created. And now I will use this button here. Instead of adding a work section, I'll be adding a, an item. Okay, so select it here, add item. And let's add a code for this reinforced concrete column. For example, it's gonna be RCC001. For example, I'm just creating a code that I'm creating now. The unit is gonna be, for example, cubic meters, okay? And in this case, we are talking about materials. Could be a concept or an item that is unclassified, could be materials, could be machinery, could be labors, and could be a waste that what could be generated when we construct this, uh, this, this, this item, okay? In this case, it's materials. I can define a price. I don't know how much we would cost uh, in South African runs one cubic meter of all the materials necessary to create this reinforced concrete column. Uh, we just put some data here. Uh, then we will we'll calculate it with more um, precision. But it's just to show you how how it works. Okay. So let's add um, some information about our our item reinforced concrete uh, column. Okay. Uh, cast in place, for example, um, square it uh, 30 per 30 centimeters, for example. Okay, just adding some, some data here. You can add uh, all the data that you need in, in this space. Okay, so let's accept. And here we can see that this, uh, this uh, item was introduced here. Okay, so I can see that we have an item that is called reinforced concrete column casting place. Now we can add more information here if we want. Reinforced concrete columns, it's gonna be column casting place squared, uh, a finish. I can add more information here, okay, if we want. We can also change the unit, we can change the, the rate, okay, we can change the code. And we can see that as we have here a coast database, and, and this is not a bill of quantities yet, we have here one cubic meter, and this is the price, okay? So one multiplied by the, the price, we have the same amount, okay? So this is the easiest way to create one item. This is an, an isolated item, it's a single item that everything that is related to the, the this, this cubic meter of reinforced concrete column, uh, it's uh, it's in this item, okay? The point is that in some times we must uh, add all the materials, we must detail the materials that are necessary to to to, to have this cubic meter of uh, reinforced concrete column, okay? This is too simple. Uh, sometimes we have some items very simple, but I'm sure that in the case of uh, a structural member like this, it wouldn't be simple like that. So we must add uh, concepts to the to, to the breakdown. We must detail the materials that are necessary to to this cubic meter of reinforced concrete column, and then define the quantities of each material and the cost of each material to have then the final cost of this uh, this item. Okay. So how can we do that? First, we must add the materials that are necessary to create this uh, 
this item. And the materials or the machinery or the labors that we will have in open banking quantities, we call it resources, okay? Resources. So, for example, let's imagine that uh, here to the reinforced concrete column, we will have uh, some uh, ready mix concrete, we'll have some steel reinforced cement bars, we'll have the formworks, we'll have the construction workers, we'll have the concrete mixer. So all the, all those items that will be inside of this main item, we call it resources, okay? So let's add some resources, then we'll use these uh, resources to add them here in the, in the main item, okay? So it's the same situation, I'll just click here on the resources tab, and let's add an item. In this case, for materials, for example, I use the code MT and then a number. It's my, my choice, okay? Materials, material 001. Let's imagine this is gonna be the, con the ready, um, ready mix concrete, for example. So it's gonna be something in, in also in, in cubic meters. It's, it's gonna be also materials. And let's imagine the price, uh, uh, it's gonna be like, I don't know, 1,500 rents, and let's set the name. For example, C20 um, megapascals ready mix concrete, for example, and let's accept. So here in the resources, now we have here one item, okay, that costs this, this, this price, okay? Let's add another one. That's gonna be, for example, the, the steel reinforcement bars. So steel reinforcement bars. Let's add here just one one type of steel, like B500, for example. Um, it's enough, just, just some details are he here to have. Of course, you can add more details if you want. This is gonna be the material number two, for example. And the unit in this case is gonna be kilograms, for example, okay? Uh, it's going to be also materials, and the price of each kilogram would be like um, 32, okay? Let's add one more material. Let's create the, the formworks, for example. So let's add an item. This is going to be um, formwork. Let's imagine it's plywood or something like that. Uh, in this case, it's going to be the material 003. The units in this case are going to be square meters. It's also materials, and the price would be uh, 500, for, exa for example. Let's add. So you can see it's very easy to add materials here. You can also duplicate the materials and then change some properties and have a new material, no problem. Plywood, this, this is going to be, for example, uh, uh, wood, normal wood, okay? Just let's change here. This is gonna be a little bit more uh, cheaper, like 350, I don't know. Just to show an example how you can, can duplicate things here. So here we have some materials in our, in, our, in our project database. These materials could be used in different items in the future, okay? So we are creating some materials that can be used in different Item. So in the future, you just have to change the price or change one or one of the properties of this material here in this list. And in all that items where these resources were used before, the, the, the information will, will be updated, okay? So let's add now, for example, some, some uh, construction workers here, some laborious. For example, in this case, uh, we add another code, L1. In this, in this case, we're, we're talking about hours, and in this case, we are talking about labors, okay? So let's add here, for example, the construction worker, okay? Um, I'll add here just one price to the hour, and let's duplicate this guy here, let's copy this guy, and let's create the construction worker two, that's gonna be, for example, the helper in this case. Okay, so one is the chief uh, and the other it's, it's the helper. Like this is gonna be like 200, for example, just to have two of them here. And to have an, an example about uh, of, an, um, of a machine, let's add another item that could be, for example, the um, concrete mixer, okay? This is gonna be also by hours. This is gonna be, the code is gonna be M001. 
and this is going to be machinery and auxiliary resources and the cost of this hour of concrete mixer, mixer could be like seven um 70 uh, runs uh probably the numbers i'm using here uh, are not correct are I'm, I'm i'm not south african so i'm not i don't know exactly the prices of this these uh, materials in South Africa. I'm just estimating a little bit and adding some some examples. Please don't 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 look for that, please. Okay. Of course, you can add the the prices according to the the reality of the the project you are doing. Okay. But here you can see that we have some resources here available. So let's come back now to our reinforced concrete column item and let's add this. Uh, these items because maybe the price that we introduced before is not correct okay so the first thing that we'll do it's going to be delete this data here because the price uh it's not correct if i delete the software will tell us that the item it's in this yellow uh yellow uh, color and there is some information here the price of the concept has not been defined so if you see uh, in a list of items some items in yellow color it means that the price it's not okay okay so it's an easy way to to find some problems in your cost database but in this case we know that it's okay because we are we will not add now we, now we add the, the resources to this to this item so let's in this case first add a concept to the breakdown i'll click here and the concept that i would like to add is for example i will start adding the ready mix concrete so I know the code, it's MT001. And I'll, I'll add to the cubic meter of reinforced concrete column, one cubic meter of ready mix concrete. Or if I want, I can also add, for example, 5% more considering that we'll have some losses, okay? So if I accept it here, now I can see that the, the ready mix concrete uh, was included with a 5% more, this was the price, the price that we introduced here, okay? And here we have the total price for the reinforced concrete column that now is um, based on the resources that were included in this concept or in this item, okay? Uh, as you can see, now that title or that concept that was in yellow, now it's again in blue, so everything gets okay of course we must uh, keep adding more concepts um to the to the to the breakdown okay so let's add more concepts i'll click here in the item where i would like to add more concepts let's use this option and instead of looking for the codes here and adding manually the codes here we can use this little uh, button here this uh, blue arrow and we can access the list of concepts that we have in, in our coast database. The same resources that are here, but imagine that in the future we will have a huge list with a lot of uh, uh, resources, with a lot of items. It's gonna be much more difficult to find the information here. So using the blue arrow, it's gonna be much easier because here you can, for example, uh, search a text, okay? And look for example, in this case to all the materials that have these two words, uh, in this case, select the code that you want, and then you just have to think about the quantity that you need. In this case, I read like uh, 120 kilograms for a um, cubic meter of reinforced concrete column. And then I have here the steel reinforcement bars with this price. So let's keep adding some items. We add, let's add, for example, here the form work, form work. Let's select here, for example, plywood. I will need here to apply to the the squared concrete, like um, let's imagine like 0.35, 0.32 uh, cubic uh, square meters of plywood to to these columns. Um, let's add some labors, for example. So construction worker. Let's add the construction worker. For each cubic meter, we need like uh, five five hours, maybe four 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 hours, like this. And to the helper, let's look to the helper here. The helper, let's put a little bit more, like five dot five. Okay, 
just to add some examples, of course, we are missing contents here. We, we must add more items depending on how you are constructing, the, the, constructing this, this reinforced concrete corner. It's just an example, okay? But the main point is that for each quantity that we introduce it here, okay, as we already have the, the materials with each price created before, now we can see the total cost of this uh, item based on the quantities that we introduced before. Okay, as I said before, if I change the price here, let's change, for example, the price of the the the, the mixed the ready mix concrete. Let's add here 200 rands, 2,000 rands. So 2,000 rands here changes also to 2,000. Oh, and the final price it's also change it. Okay, so the the best way to to update this information in the future is going to be by updating the prices or the concepts here in the resources options. Okay, so as you can see, it's very easy to create resources, items, folders to create your cost database here in OpenBeam quantities. You can also now, for example, duplicate. Let's imagine that this was the squared uh, reinforced concrete column. But if I copy that, I could, for example, create the number two. That could be, for example, let's just open a little bit here. That could be, for example, the circular section for example okay circular like this so in this case 30 centimeters of diameter and maybe here we have the same materials but let's imagine that the 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 form work would wouldn't be the plywood or would would be another quantity let's imagine we need more uh, more uh, area of plywood because maybe we must cut the the plywood in different pieces to then create this circular form and then we have some losses i don't know i'm just supposing so here we can change this for example or it's going to be a little bit more complicated to construct it so we need a little bit more hours of construction workers here so i change the the quantities here but the prices they are the same because the resources are the same so then we can have here different prices according to the item, but always using the same resources, okay? As you saw, it was very easy to copy one item and create another based on the first one, okay? All right, so I think with this little example, you can see, you could see how you can create here your, your items, but uh, probably you already have your cost database uh, in your computer. You probably have been doing other view of quantities in the past. You already have it for from your experience uh, working with this uh, type of uh, jobs. Uh, and there is there are some ways to import uh, information to 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 open in quantities. You can import your own view in all own project database or your own coast database to the program and then use this information, okay? So let me show you an example that I have here. I have an example. I have a coast database created in Microsoft Excel, okay? Let me show you here. Let's open this coast database. Uh, my coast database, uh, it's very simple, but I think it's gonna be in a, a good example to you. So I have a coast database that is uh, uh, created uh, like this, I have here a column that is a code. I have a type that, that where I would define if it's, a, it's it's an item, if it's a labor, if it's uh, materials. I have a, the unit of each line. I have the summary with a description of each each case, quantity and rate. Rate could be the price, for example. And then here I have the chapters, sub chapters. I have three levels here. Okay, so this 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 structure. Um, and then inside of each uh, one of these subchapters, I have the items. For example, here I have one item that is uh, open pit mining and any type of land using mechanical equipment and loaded onto lorries. And here I have the hours of uh, backhoe loader and the hours of the construction levers and also some other direct costs with a quantity and the price, okay? This is gonna be one item and this is gonna be another item. Both of them inside of the section 0, 1, 2, okay, excavations. Then I have another one that is soil filling and compaction with different items. This item, oh, sorry, this item, okay. So this is a coast database that, I, that was created here in on Excel or was exported from other tools in, in, in Excel format. 
and I, I would like to import this cost database to um, to open in quantities. Okay, as you can see here, the cost database is it's extensive. We have a lot of chapters here with a lot of items. Um, let's let's import it. Okay, so to import it, actually, we let me come back here. We we'll use this option here: import CSV um, files. Okay, CSV files. Uh, it's a standard format. Okay, uh, and we can export from Excel to to CSV. So let me go to the option here and save as CSV. Okay, so CSV, and here we can select these different types of CS, CSV. Okay, we'll use this one here: CSV for MS DOS. Okay, let's select this option here. I will change the name. I will put uh, that's going to be Coast Database CSV, just to know then the, the difference. Let's save it. Okay, it's already saved. I will close everything here. Let's close it. And if we come back to the folder that we have now, we, we have the Excel file and the CSV file. We can see that the icons are a little bit different here. Okay, we will import this guy to open bin quantities now. Okay, so let's come back here to open bin quantities. Let's open using this option here. Before we, we, we do that, I will clean the coast database. Okay, this was just an example. So let me clean everything because the other it's a little bit more complete. So to not, uh, I would like to to have some clean here. Let's go come back here. Just uh, it's an empty uh, space now, and we can import the CSV. Let's look for the folder where the CSV was saved. So it was save it in this folder. As you can see, we can read just the CSV. The file, the Excel file is not available now, although in the we know that in this folder uh, the, the file is located, but just the CSV can be read. So let's select it. It's already here. And now let me come back here to the, the folder. Let me open the Excel file just to show you one detail that we must know when we are importing this these files. Okay, we, if we open here, Again, let's go to the top of the, the 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 database here. Here we have some columns: column A, B, C, D, E, F. That is code type, unit, summary, quantity, rate. We could also say that this is the column one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Uh, and when we are importing here in OpenBIM quantities, we also have here some data that we must import to the database okay so for we must establish a correlation between the order of the columns in the csv file and the column the, the information that is here okay so for example uh, i must go to the file and see where is the code the code is here code is column one so i must come back here and put one in the code then the type the type here is the two so yeah let's come back here and put two okay maybe you can have some situation like this let's imagine that the type is here the type in this case would be one two three four five six the seven if it would be like that you here in the type would put seven okay this is how it works let me come back in my case i have everything in the same order one two three four five six and here the same okay some another important thing here is uh, when we exported from Excel, we selected the MS DOS option. So here we can also we must select also the MS DOS option. Okay, and there is another important thing that is this option here: index of the first line to text or to import of text to import. Okay, what it means? In my file, actually the first line doesn't matter because I don't have any item here. This is just the name, the title of each column. So I will not transform this line in one item or folder of my project database. So I will keep, I will start reading the file from the second line. Okay, the second line is the first line that is really important for my for my course database. So here I will put two in this case. Okay, maybe you can have more lines like 
like mine here in the one with the name of the project with some data uh, so you can uh, ignore these first lines that are not important to the coast database and start and, and touch the software which is the first line that really important that is really uh, really important to your to your coast database that is in my case it's the the second one okay all right so let's accept and uh and now the items were imported here. The items and also all the resources that were uh, in my in my Excel file. Okay, as you can see here, we have a structure with eight folders, and in each folder we have also some uh, subfolders here. Okay, in some cases three levels, as you can see here, and in each item we have all the materials or the, all the resources uh, with all the prices. Okay that are necessary to uh to th that will be imported that were imported from from my from my excel file okay um yeah that's that that's how we can import the csv file to to open in quant is very easy you just have to create uh, an excel with this structure okay so um, in excel if you have the your coast database in a different format it's going to be very easy to to put it on 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 a structure like this, like uh, different levels, and then the items, uh, and so it's it's a very simple structure. You can easily convert from other formats to this format, and then exporting CSV and import your CSV to open in quantities. Okay. There's a detail here that I would like to show you that is related to the rate. In my case, uh, I use the, the 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 word rate and there is no symbol here i actually have these prices in euros okay i know that these prices were introduced in euros okay when we imported as we defined it before that the the currency was uh, south african rents of course that the the values that we have here now are too low okay um i will uh, convert euros to to South African rents, I know that the prices are not just as simple like that, okay. But I would like to show you that these conversions can be uh, can be applied. So let's look here in on Google. So today the conversion from euro to South African rent is la around uh, 19. So there is one option here that is, for example, I can click in the the, the title of, in all the items. With the right button, I can apply a price increment and then multiply by a factor. For example, in this case, it would be 19.59. Oh, 19, not 10. Okay. And I can select which type of concept uh, I would like to apply this, this price increment just to the laborers, just to materials, just to the machinery, or for those that are unclassified or everything. So I, if I accept now, here I have. The prices multiplied by the 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 the, the factor that we introduced. It, okay, of course, in this case, I'm not uh, this. As I said before, this is just an example. You must include your real prices, but maybe you have some changes uh, during the from one month to another, or you are look, working in different regions of the same country where you know that the prices are a little bit higher. So you can use this option to create these price increments. Here we created these price increments in everything, but you could, for example, just click in one element and apply the price increment just to the element that is selected, or just a folder, or just a subfolder. Okay, so you can you can use it uh, depending on your your need, but uh, in this case we selected. All the, the the coast databases and apply it a price increment. Okay. All right. So let's save it. Okay. And the coast database now it's created. It's uploaded to OpenMinQuant. It's it's available. And with this coast, these items, these concepts, we could start working creating our view of quantities. As I said before, once we have our project database in the first time, then we can also export this project database and import this project database. So you can export this project database from one project to import them in another, or you can export it to someone uh, for, for colleagues and by email, by 
Google Drive or any other uh, mean, and then import again in a different project. Okay, so the, the work that you do creating your project database, you, you don't lose it here. You can keep using this information in the future projects. Okay. All right, so let's come back here to our um, our highlights or our guide, let's say that. We already have our costs. We know how to create it here. So let's import more information to open bin quantities. Let's keep importing information. In this case, let's import DWG, DXF, PNG, and PDF files. Why? Because we'd like to combine the information that was imported or created here with the information that was that will be imported here to then have the, um, the bill of quantities, okay? So we are combining two types of information. Let's come back here to open bin quantities. So we were working uh, before here in this area, or actually here in this area. Now we'll use this area here, okay? Here is gonna be the 3D view, or here we will see the files that we import uh, in a while. So to start importing, we will use actually this option here. Here we have three options that we'll be using a lot. Uh, they are related to, to these files that are imported. The first one is gonna be this one. This one, uh, it's, a, um, it's a tool where you create a library of files. So here we import and classify these files, and here we have a library of imported files, okay? So let's add a new file. Um, let's go to the, the, the same, file, same folder that we have been working, looking before. In this folder, I have some examples in DWG, some examples in JPG, and some example, you want an example in PDF, okay? Here, we can select the type of files that we want to import. So, DXF, DWG, DWF, images, PDF, okay? So, you can filter here. Let's start uh, importing, for example, the example in DWG, okay? So, let's import. The software is reading the file. So, here I have some information. I know the, the name of the file. I know the creation date and the size. One important thing is that uh, I don't need to have a, a CAD um, a CAD software in my computer to to use this information inside of Open Quantities. So if you don't have AutoCAD or any other CAD uh, software, don't worry. You don't need to do to to you don't need the software to read the information. Okay, read these files because here, as you can see, we have a kind of viewer where you can manage, manage the layers that you are importing. You can also zoom out or zoom in, okay? Uh, you can, uh, because now, as you see, we must um, define the scales and adjust some parameters here, okay? Uh, here are some buttons. For example, I can use it to zoom twice, uh, or I can zoom full window like this, or I can create like a, a highlight zoom like like this for example okay or i can just use the mouse and and using the pen or even the the scroll of your mouse you can navigate in your file okay in this file i have uh, some plans for example here i have the ground floor plan i have a typical floor plan i have a furniture floor plan and i also have here the roof plan okay and then I also have here some sections and elevations here, some facades here in the bottom of the, the file, okay? I have it here. Uh, so as all, this, all this information could be very useful to then extract the quantities. Um, maybe, depending on the file that you have, the file could be very... Uh, could have could be very heavy with a lot of information. So it could be useful to... Uh, 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 uncheck some of the layers, for example, the hatches, or maybe in this case, for example, the trees does not matter to me, the cars, or even, for example, the furniture. Let's deactivate the furniture. Let's look for some shades, okay? Uh, you, you can select the layers that are really important to you to have a lighter uh, workflow. So here you can do that. As I said before, you don't have to, to have AutoCAD in your in your computer to do that because here you have these options to manage uh, the layers. So the, the software imports and recognizes the layers of your DWG or DXF file, okay? So uh, I have here one file. 
for example, let's imagine that with this file, I will have here, I will create a one that's going to be used to the typical floor plan. Uh, that I'll call it complete. Okay, complete because I have all the information together here. Okay, but then I can, for example, duplicate this file. Actually, I'm using the same file, but I'm creating a different template that could be, for example, just the columns. Okay, just the columns because I know that there is one one specific uh, one specific uh, layer just to the columns. Maybe in the future it's going to be useful to have the uh, a template with just the columns to count the number of columns or to uh, do something. So you can combine it. You can create these combinations here according to um, using the same file. You can have different scenarios. Let's say, okay. It was just just an example here. Uh, let's come back to this guy here. But there is one point that I think it's important. That is the scale. Okay, we will measure this this file, so we must share that the scale is correct. Okay, uh, and I can open this uh, this option here. And the first thing that I can see here when I I open is that when this file was created in AutoCAD, it was the, the origin of the project is here. Okay. A little bit far from the from the drawings. So the first thing that I can do is, for example, use this option here and select uh, a new orange. Could be, for example, like this, or could be near to the 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 drawing that I will be using. For example, I will be using the the typical floor plan, like here, for example. Okay. So I will change the origin of the 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 project. Okay. If I accept. Now it's going to be updated, okay? Here, the same situation could could uh, could be the the scale. I don't know the scale of the project, okay? So one thing that I can do is uh, zoom in, for example. Let's go there, and I can apply, for example, a scale. There are different uh, scale adjustment. There are two ways to do that. The first one, it's Add a, add a number here, add a value for the scale in the, in the x direction, in the y direction, okay? If we know the value, exactly the value, we can add, the, add it manually. Or we can use this option here that is the adjust to, to scale option, okay? So if, if I know one specific part of the project, I know the distance, for example, I know that these walls have 20 centimeters of thickness, so I can click here, and tell to the software that is this is uh, 0.2 meters, okay? And then the software automatically calculates the scale, okay? So if I know one 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 distance in the project, sometimes we have all the sometimes we have the information in in the project. We have the 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 numbers here in the project. You can just select two points that you know the distance and apply uh, 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 using this this option here, okay? And then we know that the 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 software is in the the real scale, the, the correct scale. If now I duplicate as we saw, we made before, everything that was adjusted before in the first file will, will be adjusted in the second. So maybe a good practice could be start uh, adjusting the scale and adjusting the origin of the first file and then duplicate it and 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 change the the layers for example uh, because then you have the you know that everything gets in the in the correct scale okay so this is columns this is going to be complete for example okay yeah um Let's keep importing more files. Let's import, for, for example, now some pictures. Okay, so let's add one more file. So let's import here the images, for example, the image one. Let's accept. Here in the images, actually, we don't have layers. It's quite similar, but we don't have uh, layers because it's just a JPG. But of course, you can also change the origin. In this case, it's good, but uh, we don't know the scale. So yeah, let's go here. I know that, for example, the distance from this point to this point, it's 5.9 meters, 
So the scale, this, in this case, it's something totally different from the first one because it's just a picture. So let's accept, but now we know that they are in the same scale. Let's add one more picture that I have here. So I have this JPG2. This is a quite nice example because it's totally different from the first one. This is a picture that I got from the Google Maps from, from Midrand in Johannesburg, okay? Uh, let's imagine that this uh, plot, this area here will be the place where we will construct and we would like to add a fence or would like to clean the terrain before we construct. So um, maybe we can then use this information to get some quantities from here, okay? There's something nice in Google Maps that we can see the scale always here in this corner. So this is a good reference to put this, this image on, on the scale. So let's do that. So I will just go there. Let's go there, 10 meters. Let's use the option here to change the scale. So I know that from here to here, it's around 10 meters. So the scale is another here, totally different from the others, okay? Let's accept. And then we can also use this image as reference to create, to extract our quantities. And the last example we'd like to import here, just to show you the, 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 the options that we have in the software, it's a PDF file. It's actually the same situation. Select PDF, here I have a PDF. The software will analyze the PDF. Let's accept. And the PDF can be also, look at the orange in here, it's a little bit strange. We could adjust, adjust that. But here, the same situation. I don't know the, the scale. Let's let's just adjust the scale. For example, I use as reference here the a door like this one. Okay, a door that could be 80 centimeters, for example. Okay, probably uh, this this scale was 100. Okay, because I got the door without too much precision. As you can see here, my PDF don't have a good resolution, but it depends on the PDF that you import. If you have a PDF with a better resolution, it's going to be better. But if you have a PDF that is not so good, no problem, you can also import it. The point is how to define the scale. So in this case, I will adjust. I think it's going to be 100. Okay, so I will use 100 here. And now we have here some, some different files. I will just add some names. For example, the first example in JPG, uh, I'll call it uh, example JPG floor plan, for example, I'll call that like that. Uh, the second example is gonna be example JPG Google Maps, okay? And the last one's gonna be example PDF that are called also floor plan, but in this case it's PDF, okay? Just to have some different names because then you see where these names will be uh, important, okay? So let's accept. And now we have the information that we need, okay? Actually, we already imported and we also um, adjusted this, the scale and the origin of the imported file. So actually we made these three first steps of our workflow, okay? So with, with this information, now we can create the basic BOQ structure based on work sections and sub work sections. So actually now we will start creating our view of quantities um, using information that was uploaded before. So let's go back and let's start doing that. So yeah, I will set my windows like this now and now we'll start working with this area here, okay? As you can see here in this option, we have these buttons, the addition or the edit block of options that is quite similar or is maybe the same that we have here inside of the the project database uh, option okay so it works the same so let's add some sections for example chapter zero preliminary works okay let's add another one that's going to be uh, we said we, we uh, first we made uh, it was substructure substructure then super structure okay then we created external and internal walls okay what oh sorry here there is a problem I forgot the code. No problem. 
let's put here and let's adjust it okay what's the difference between now and the first one the first one it was at the project database and now it's the view of quantities as i said before the project database and view of quantity structures can be the same but sometimes they will be different so actually we'll feed the view of quantities with information from the project database okay the project database will be used in future projects the view of quantities is just this scenario and the different the main difference is that here we'll add then some quantities to each item of the coast database the quantities that we'll get from the uh, the files the the dwg files okay um Let's add some more some more options here. Like in four, it's gonna be isolation and water proofing. Five, it's gonna be roofs. And six, it's gonna be internal finishes. And let's add uh, one that is different from the the coast database, just to show you that we can have different structures here, like external works, for example, external works. Okay, so here we have the 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 chapters or the folders of our view of quantities. Okay, so if we have that, let's add some items to this uh, coast database. Let's add, for example the structural elements for example just to use the same example that we made before so in this folder now i'll add an item okay which item i will add here if i know the concept code i can add the concept code here okay which are the concept codes the concept codes are the codes that we have here so in the structural concrete works uh here for example i have a flat slab that is have this code or have I have here some columns and the column have this code. So if I know the code of the the, the column, I can copy from here and I can come back here at an item, paste the code, and then apply a factor if I want. Okay. And then I have here the the, the item inside of this folder or this chapter. Okay, this is one way. Of course, there is another way that is much easier. That is, add the item, use the blue arrow, and search for a code. For example, let's we add the rectangular square column. Let's add a bin, for example. Let's look for bin. So here we have reinforced concrete flat slab. Drop it bin, straight reinforced concrete, like this one, for example. I will add this one. Okay. And then in this chapter, we have the bins. Okay. This is the code of the bin, this is the description, this is the price, but we don't have quantities yet. Let's add, for example, also the slabs. Okay, slab. Oh, sorry, it's not here. We must open the list. Slab. Reinforced concrete slab, there are different types here. I will get this one, for example. And then we have the slabs. So now we are adding information from the project database that we created before. Okay, we are not creating new items. We are just importing these items from the project database. If we need to add more items uh, or add an item that we don't have in the project database to the view of quantities, first we go to the project database, add the information that we need here, save it, and then here we can feed the view of queue with information from the project database. Okay, all right, here, uh, here we can see some things that are very interesting. For example, uh, we can change the, the, the item. So I selected before the, this item that have this code, but selecting another item from the list, I can change the code. That's one option. And another option is to see the breakdown of this item or this concept. It means the items that are part or of this reinforced concrete rectangular or square column. So here I have the, the steel, I have the the, we can open the summary a little bit more here. Okay, galvanized tie wire, a metal sheet, adjustable uh, something, a ready mixed concrete, form worker assistant. So all the the items 
that are part of this cubic meter of reinforced concrete rectangular or square column, okay? We can also see here in the graph how is the importance of this each item in the total amount of this price. So I can see that in this case, this material here that is the steel bars uh, have maybe it's one of it's the most expensive material here in the in this in this concept. I can also here see that the labors are very expensive. Uh, although I can see here that these metal sheets are not too expensive or they. The, the impact of this price in the total amount of the cubic meter of, of this material is it's less. Okay, so we can see here the breakdown. And then we can also see other type of data here according to the information that was introduced in this, um, in this concept. Okay, all right. So yeah, now we know uh, how to include uh, items from the project database to the view of, view of quantities, okay? Um, but now we must add the quantities here, okay? The quantities to then have the total amount of this chapter, for example, to then create the bill of quantities. So, for example, let's imagine that um, let's imagine that we add the quantities for the um, let me let me think about one example. Um, I will add here some walls. Let's create the first example with a wall. Okay, so let me add a, an item. Let's look for a wall. For example, an interior partition, uh, partition wall, 11 centimeters thickness. This one, for example. Okay. okay. So I will do the first example here with the walls. Then we come back with the with the structure structural elements. Let's imagine that in one project we have a lot of walls. Okay, and for each wall we have different measurements. So we can add quantity detail lines to, to establish these quantities. For example, I will add one here. So for example, let's imagine that I have the wall number one, okay? The wall number one, I will add the area of this, 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 this wall. That's gonna be, let's imagine I know this area, okay? Let's imagine that is 20 square meters, okay? I can delete, for example, this, values here and leave just the area. And here I can see that the wall one is 20 square meters, okay? I can then copy that and create the, let's open it here a little bit, the wall two. The wall two, the area would be, for example, like 18, okay? Then I can copy and the wall three. Wall number three, that, that could be 25. Okay, so once I add this data here, I'm actually adding all the details to related to the quantities of this item. I can see that, that the total is 63, 20 plus 18 plus 25, and 63 multiplied by this cost of each square meters of internal partition. The total amount in this case is 16,800 runs. Okay, to these three walls that were included into the software. Why is it important to define these concepts here? Because these concepts, they will be uh, then available on the reports in the end. So it's a way to detail uh, each element of our, of, uh, of all, all, the, all the elements that were measured. Okay, where the quantities, how can I, how can I say, um, this is, this is a way to, to correlate the quantities of the bill of quantities with the information from the, the project, okay? In this case, the values were introduced manually, okay? But we'll see in a while how to get this information from the DWG files or images, okay? There's a second way to, to describe these values. Let's imagine that we know that the, the length of the, the the, the the walls and we also know the high oh, sorry high yeah I think it's like this let's imagine that we always know that the high is three meters and then we actually we measure the, the length the length it's like I don't know let's put seven okay so in this wall one it was seven in length multiplied by three so it's 21 okay and then we'll 
21 plus 18 plus 25, 64. Or in this in this case, three and six. And this is uh, this is just a name that we put here. It's it's not a, not a variable. Okay. So this is length. Let's put here length. Let's put here also length. This is high. Let's put it high. Let's put it high. The height is going to be always three. Okay. So the idea is these cells, if they are filled, it's the the results is going to be the first one multiplied by the second, multiplied by the third, multiplied by the fourth. Just if these cells are filled. If they are zero, they will not be considered. Okay. So you don't have to put one here, for example. Although if you put it, it's going to be, of course, the same result. But if you leave it uh, empty, no problem because it's not considered. So you have four places, four columns to create your formula uh, to then um, calculate the quantity of a specific item uh, that is uh, then um, multiply it and then we have the total sum and uh, the total quantity. Okay, so this is how it works. But this is a, let's say that this is a manual way to introduce this uh, information, okay? And probably uh, we would like to get this information from the plans, from the, the drawings. So let's do that, okay? Let's let's do that. So once we already imported our files, we use this option to import our files and create our library of um, templates. Now we'll jump from the first option to the second, okay? And with the second option, we can uh, select which one, which uh, which template we'd like to see uh, now. For example, uh, I've created one that was the typical floor plan complete. For example, I'll select it and let's accept. Okay. And then I can see this file here. Okay. I can see the file here in this window. And let's zoom, for example, to the typical floor plan that is this one here. And I will use the information that we have here to, for example, uh, measure the length of each one of these uh, walls that we have here. Okay. For example, let's start. I'll uh, use this. This I uh, will measure this wall here. For example, something that could be very useful is activate the the object snaps. Okay. When we activate the snaps, we can track the the, the different uh, op, the different lines of the file that was imported. So we we can track the the endpoint, the intersection between two lines, the nearest point to the cursor, the midpoint of a line. Okay, so it's something that will uh, provide more precision when measuring. So I'll activate the snaps. Okay, uh, some of them at least the endpoint, intersection, and nearest, and then we use these tools that we have here to measure lengths, measure areas, measure angles. Okay, so we have, we have here different tools to measure uh, elements, okay? For example, the wall one, let's imagine the wall one is this one here, okay? So I use this option here, and then I will get, the, for example, from here to here, for example, okay? I know that the length is, Three meters and and seventy centimeters. Okay, three three point seven. So three point seven. If now the information is here on the screen, it save it. Okay, so I can go to these fields here that we have here, and use and 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 copy the information that is here to here. Okay, three point seven. Three point seven here. It was updated also here that was multiplied. So here we have the change and here we have the total change, okay? Another one. Let's imagine we like to measure, for example, from here to here, okay? This is five meter. I'll go to the wall to five meter, okay? Oh, sorry. Ah, th th there was a mistake here. I used the total of both of them. So let me delete and let's create again, okay? So from here to here, then I can put it here, five meters, okay? Uh, let's let's do another one. Let's imagine that uh, the wall tree, it's gonna be, 
from here to here, for example, or could be, for example, to here, okay, the wall tree. Then we have that value here, that value there, okay? Let's duplicate and create the wall four. Let me show you one example that's going to be very nice. The circular, the circular, this circular wall here. For example, this circular wall, I will start measuring from 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 this point. For example, I'll come here to here, and now I will create little little pieces of um, little little dimensions here, little measures. Okay, and now if I use the option here, it's gonna be the, the, the total, the sum of all the all the the segments that were created here. Okay, so four four meters. So we know that we have a um, a, a big one here that is 2.9, and then we have small pieces, and the total is gonna be four uh, four point one. Okay. So as you can see, it's very easy to get the lengths from the DWG file and then assign these lengths to fields here and then have the total measurement without adding this information manually, okay? So you are getting the information from the DWG file. This is why it's so important to adjust the scale of your project before you start uh, getting these measurements because if it's out of the scale, the measurements will be totally incorrect, okay? Something that could be interesting in this case is we really know that the height is three meters. I'm I'm not sure. I just introduced this value before, but as we have here the some elevations, we can also, for example, come here and uh, measure the height. For, for example, from here to I can use also here the some options to 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 get the the most precise way four meters. For example, if I, if I get it from the from the corner, it's going to be more precise, like this. Actually, it's three three point five three point four. So let's add three point four here. Three point four. Let's come back to wall three. Now we know that it's three point four. So now we have more precise uh, value here. Three point four and three point four. Okay. So this is how we can get information from the DWG file and add to these cells here. Let's do some more examples, okay? Let's do some more examples. Let's create one that is, for example, for, for these labs, okay? Reinforced concrete flat slab, horizontal with some information, okay? Let's add some quantities here. So first, let's add, um, a quantity detail line, okay? The quantity detail, I, I, I will, I will measure the slabs uh, by floors, okay? So let's imagine that I have the floor one, okay? Flat slabs, or just floor one, okay? And here I will measure directly the area. Actually, I know. Actually, yeah, this is a um, an item that is uh, in square square meters, so I will measure areas, okay? So let's add in this quantity detail here. Floor one, okay. Floor one. Now I will not use the measure length. I will use the measure area option. So for example, I'll get this point. I'll get that point. I'll get that point. I'll get that point. And I'll get that point. Okay. So now I know that the area, or the total area of this uh, this floor is uh, 197. So let's put it here, 197, and we have here 197. This is the total amount that we have now. Okay. Uh, if we know that we have the typical floor and we have three of them, one option could be at here, for example, number of floors. And add here a number that we know, three, four. Okay, this is one option. And then we have the total quantity here. Another option would be detail. I, 
I actually prefer to to create floor by floor, although they are they have the same the same values. Okay, uh, copy floor one, floor two, and floor three, for example. Too. So I will just change the name here. Floor one, floor two, and floor three. Okay. And then I know, for example, that the roof is different. So in the roof, for example, I have less area. So let me copy. Let's change the roof. Actually, I have two roofs here. I have two two levels of roof. The oh, sorry, the roof. It's it's actually let's displace it. It's going to be the last one. So the roof um, there is going to be a, bit, a little bit less. Is so let's let's measure again. Let's go to the roof. So this is the roof, and the roof is going to be something like just just the middle here, okay? So no problem. Let's let's measure this area. So let's start here, here, here. Let's get some points here, there, there, there. Here, as you can see, it's very useful to have these snaps working, activated because with the snap it's going to be more precise when you get these points. Now you know how to create, to measure the, the curves. There is no problem to, to measure curved elements. Okay. Let's just finish this area here. And yeah, it's completed. So the number here, it's a little bit less in, in the the other levels it was 197 here we have 160 so let's put this data here and the roof now it's um it's introduced here so you we have here the the the, the total amount to the reinforced concrete slabs okay let's imagine that this concrete slab uh, the the item was cubic meters one option would be measure the area, for example, here, and then add the thickness, for example, here. Thickness. And add, for example, a value to that. 20 centimeters, for example. That could be an option. This is not the case. It was just an example, so let me uh, undo that. But yeah, you can combine this information. There is no problem, okay? All right, so let's do one example more. Let's now do an example with the columns, for example. Okay, the columns are with a quantity detail line. So this is going to be the columns. Okay, in this case, I will create uh, the one one field that's going to be the area of the section. Then one that's going to be oh, sorry. Let me do again. So the area of the section. I, I will do also the height of the column, okay, and the number of columns, okay, and this is going to be everything to the columns. So yeah, let's start adding information. The columns. The first thing that I will do it's going to be uh, the area of the columns. I have here some. Actually, here we can deactivate the the template that we introduced and use the, the other one that we filter with, just with the columns. It's going to be easier to find information here. So we have the columns. Okay, let's measure the area, for example. The area of one column. One column, it's going to be this little piece here. Let's add the area here. Perfect. Uh, how many colors we, co columns we have here? We have one, two, three, six, seven, eight, nine, twelve, uh, thirteen, fourteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen columns. So nineteen columns. And what's the height of the columns? Let's come back to the other template and let's get the the height of the columns from this section, for example. Let's imagine that the height of the column is the same that we have for the walls. Okay. Three point four. So here we have the total volume of columns in one uh, one uh, floor, okay? 
So we can now add here columns, floor one, okay? And then we can copy and floor two, okay? For example, as we, we made with the slabs, the same situation, okay? It's just to show you one example, okay? So there are different ways to combine the data that you can, can get from the files and the data that you can add manually. You can uh, define how you can use these uh, values here. There is no, there's no specific rules to do that. You can create your own, okay? Uh, but this, that is important that the concepts that you add here, as I said before, they will be in the reports in the, in the end. We'll see then how to export these reports. So if you add those details, it's gonna be easier to understand and these numbers in the future, okay? Nice, we saw how to use the DWG files to extract the, the quantities, but we also imported more files. For example, we imported the JPG floor plan. So let's activate the JPG, and the JPG is here, okay? So let's imagine, let's use this, this example to create a, uh, something related to the finishes, for example. Let's measure something to the finishes. We saw some concrete elements, some some walls, but let's let's do some internal finishes. For example, let's imagine that each color of this um, house here it's a different finish to the to the pavement. Okay, the the tiles they will be different. Okay, so the first thing that I'll do is include some items from my course database to this chapter here. Okay, so at item, let's see what we have here for, if you have some tiles here. Oof, we have a lot of them here. Uh, porcelain, indoor cladding, ceramic. Yeah, I'll create, I'll add two of them here. For example, I'll add this porcelain something. I'll add here. And let me add another one. That is gonna be this indoor I don't know if this is a pavement. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll just get this one. Okay, just to show some the examples. Just you have two options here. Okay, the first one is going to be, for example, here in this area of the garage. Okay, so I will measure this area here. So I will add a quantity detail. This is going to be the garage. Okay, the garage. I will measure the area of the garage. Okay, the garage. And here I will use also the measure area two. So I'll start here. Let's do, although it's a picture and the picture don't have the best quality, there's no problem. I'm, I'm sure that this data could be much more precise than, than you have a, a, a measure with, with a, a manual data, a data that you get from, from a, without, without using this, this snaps here, okay? Of course, if you are you are working with a B model, it's going to be much more precise. And if you work with a DWG file, it could be more precise than the picture too. So here we have this area. Let's put it here. Okay. Uh, now let's go to the other. That's going to be this this light color here. That we have the dining, lounge, kitchen, and family room, and this food space here. So let's add a quantity detail line. This is going to be also area. Okay, let's start with the uh, dining room. Sorry, dining and a kitchen. They are together. Okay. Sorry, it was dining and lounge. So let's change it. Dining and lounge. Okay. So yeah, let's get this information. I'll start here. Here, here, there, there, there. Here we have a little bit of finishes here. There, 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 and there. Okay, 29. Let's put it here. Let's copy that. And this, in this case, it's going to be, for example, kitchen and family in, in family room. Kitchen and family room, okay? Let's go again. 
let's start here go there go there go there a little bit here go there go there go there 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 here and here okay let's confirm it 26 26 okay and the last one let's copy that that's gonna be the food that's gonna be this guy here okay this area here so now we have here the three elements that we created and as you saw the same the same thing that we that that we did with the DWG file we can also do with the um, with the the images okay the only thing that we must uh, be careful it's about the scales when we import these files in the beginning okay so yeah, let's see some another example. Let's imagine that uh, I would like to add a fence in the in a in a plot, for example. So we imported uh, in the beginning that file from the Google Maps. So if you activate it, look. Let me show you one example that is nice. I can activate more than one file. Okay. So for example, let me activate the 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 for example the two of them together. Let me see if uh, here they are overlap that we cannot see but um, the idea is let me see maybe the, the the AutoCAD file could be not overlapped let me see here yeah here you can see they are multiple files here that can be activated too if you want and as you can see they are in the same scale the, the, the plot have the size that is correct to the the size of the the um, the DWG files, we can see that is uh, that that could be a, a a correct size to this building according to the size of the, this plot, okay? Because the uh, the scales were adjusted before, okay? Let me deactivate the the DWG file, and let's imagine that I would like to add a fence to the to this plot here that we took from Google Maps. So here in the external works, let me add an item, for example. Let me look for a wall, for example, or a fence. I've got to get this one. And this um, to this item, I will add a quantity detail line. That's going to be length multiplied by height. Okay. And this is going to be, I will just call wall. Okay. The height is going to be like 1.8 meters. Fix it. But the length, I will get it from the, from the, the image. Okay. So yeah, the wall is here. Let's use the option to measure length. I'll get it, for example, I imagine that is here. I imagine that is here, here. Oh, just, uh, just here, let's imagine that the, it's gonna be until this point, okay? So as you can see, we can also get information from here. Let's confirm, let's paste it here and now we have the area of the wall for the perimeter of the plot okay so this is another uh, interesting way to use the software to get information from places like that okay and the last one would be for example the pdf but actually it's the same situation let me activate the pdf the pdf is here uh, it's like a picture in this case. So let's use it for another example, like like we made for the for the finishes. Let's imagine here we have it's it's quite the same, but uh, let me get this little bathroom here just to to add one detail here. The porcelain, okay. So add, let's add a quantity line, area, okay. Are you create here an, a name for that and then we just use the same tool to do here with the PDF and then we put it here and we have the detail okay so very easy and 
and it works uh, the, in the same way that then the pictures and the DWGs. Um, it, but again, you just have to adjust the scale careful, uh, carefully uh, before you start uh, working here. Okay. Let's come back here to our list of um, steps of this workflow. So we know how to import and create custom databases. We know to, how to import the files to adjust the files. We know how to create the structure of the BOQ. We know how to add items to the BOQ. We know now how to different ways to measurement to to, to measure things like distance, areas, volumes, and counting elements. And uh, the final thing is uh, obtain the reports. Uh, the final reports with the results of this BOQ, okay? So here we are creating the BOQ, but actually uh, we, we already know how much it would, would, would cost. At this moment, we have this total cost here, although there are a lot of chapters here that are empty yet, uh, but let's imagine that everything is finished here, that we have a complete BOQ. Um, then we can export this file. So we can export the the the, the BOQ to a to a file and then import in a in a future project. That's one option. But you can also export the reports using this option here. Okay. There are different types of reports. We have reports just with the quantities, just uh, with the cost breakdown structure, the price bill of quantities, detailed price bill of quantities. Uh, there are different types of reports. Uh, let me show you, for example, this one that I think it's very nice. Let's add a name to this project. Name of my project. Let the location would be Joburg, for example. Developer site, author Afonso, date. Okay, let's accept. And here we can see uh, a report, detailed price view of quantities. Name of my project. Okay, here we has, have an index. We can see the 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 chapters that we introduced before but here actually we see just the chapters that have items with quantities it means that if we have a chapter that is empty we will not see it here okay so it's it's something that is very nice because if you are creating your BOQ and you forgot something empty or a folder that you thought you use but you then you didn't use there's no problem because here you see just those that are really important to the, the results. And here we can see a very detailed report. For example, the first uh, item that have quantities is the reinforced concrete rectangular column that is in the chapter superstructure. This is the quantity, this is the rate, and this is the amount. Uh, but here we can see that the details that we've created, they are here. We created two lines of details of quantity details, and each line we add three parameters that were multiplied, and then we have a, the total. Or for, for example here, the slabs, floor one, two, three, and the roof with different areas. Remember that these areas came from the DWG file, so it's an, a very precise number, okay? This is not a number that was introduced manually, and here we can see this number in the reports, so connecting the project with the the, the the cost, the final cost report. So there is a lot of automation here. External, internal walls. Wall one, two, three, four. This, the length and the height. These walls, remember, we got it. We using the measure area two. Okay. So here we have the total. The internal finishes. Remember, garage and 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 bathroom, kitchen, dining room, uh, and food with the areas uh, and the total. Okay. And this uh, report, we can exp we can share it with someone. So it, we, we, using this button, we generate a link, and then we can send this link to someone. We can export it in different formats, in PDF, in words. If you want to change it on Word after, we can do that. Uh, in HTML, in uh, RTF. We can also print it. We can send it to our printer. Okay, and we can also change the appearance of these reports. So there are some tools here. We can change the style, selecting different uh, fonts, the sizes, the colors, the, the spaces, uh, the footer, the header, the text body. So here we can set these uh, parameters. 
you can also change the logo uh, of your project okay here you can also change for example the other options related to the the background color of the software you can also set when the software will save automatically for you um yeah there are some uh, other uh, options here that you can set okay All right, so that, that was the, the presentation of today. I hope it was um, uh, nice content. I hope you, you had your doubts uh, solved. Uh, as I said before, if you have any doubt, you can keep uh, uh, sending uh, your questions to us. You can use the, the address, the email address that Loreto shared before through the chat, uh, or you can also uh, contact us using our uh, contact page um to know more a little bit of our um, our software okay Lorato, i don't know if you have any other uh question any other comment to to conclude to finish this presentation from from my part i think it's it's already uh done thank you so so much afonso that was um very informative um definitely definitely um enjoyed that um and i hope our um, audience as well got to learn and they got to um, understand um, the software a little bit more and also how um, importantly it can make their lives easier because I know a bit of consciousness is a pain. Um, so this definition um, would, would absolutely help and, and go a long way, not just only in assisting um, the quantity surveyors or the engineers, but also um, the contractor on site and also the client. So um, absolutely, absolutely appreciate it. Um, yeah, so please um, contact, you are more than welcome to contact me anytime, lorato.mtia at site.com or site at site.com. Alternatively, you can just get hold of us via that contact as um, page on the site website. Thank you so, so much, Afonso. Thank you for your time. Thank you for sharing your knowledge with us. Um, and that's it for my side. Thank you so much, Lorato. As I said before, it was a pleasure. See you in a in a next opportunity. Absolutely. Okay. Alrighty. Have a good day. Um, Thank you. Have a good day. Ciao, ciao.